Hey, Swag Network, we're glad to have you for another exciting Saturday, the fourth edition. Uh, we have Dr. Ryan Jones here for Sports Physiology. He's here to talk to you about how to stay fit during the pandemic. And we're going to get a background of not just his sports, but actually how did he get into his role? We all have dreams of making it to the league, but sometimes our dreams are deferred and we become experts in other areas. Sometimes still being able to be close to the sport that you love, like, um, yeah. like Ryan Jones is. So we would like to begin by introducing and having him tell a story. So thank you, Ryan, for coming yeah. and the floor is yours. Thank you guys for having me. And uh, I'm happy to, happy to be here talking to you guys and working with the SWAG initiative Davis told me great things about it, so I'm excited to be here. Thank you guys for joining me. Yeah, so, I mean, my story is, and me and Anthony kind of talked beforehand, a, a New York City kid, right, a, a Brooklyn kid who grew up with, I guess you could say, uh, <laughs> hoop dreams or, you know, athletic dreams of some sort. Um, but, you know, sometimes life happens and it doesn't always go as planned. So I started you know, like everybody else, playing sports when I was a kid, uh, playing sports in high school, middle school, on the playgrounds in Brooklyn. And, you know, that led me up to where I am now. And uh, it didn't go as planned. It, there was a lot of misdirection. So I started playing basketball in middle school. And you, got, you get to high school and then you realize <laughs> there's different levels, right? And sometimes maybe their your talent or your how do you say your 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 team or your location or your city or you know your coaches right so there's a whole bunch of different variables depending on if you're going to take it to the next level and that's a big jump between high school and college huge jump um so for me it wasn't in my cards and i was uh, at, at first, upset about it, but oddly, you know, I kind of, I kind of deal with deal with it, and that took me into into college and kind of just feeling a little bit lost. Like, all right, what do I do now? Right? Like, so I'm a freshman. I'm used to being active. I'm used to playing sports, and that I kind of lost all that over the span of you know a few months. So. Uh, that was a tough point. That was a tough point. It was kind of a, it is a, you're at a fork in the road. Like, which direction do you go? Do you keep hustling it or do you, do you try and adapt? And I had to adapt. So funny enough, I had a friend who was a kinesiology major and he was a high school. He went to high school with me, but he was more of a, how do I say <laughs> He was more the intellect than I was. He was really into school. He was really into, you know, how the body works, not just exercise, but what about exercise makes it work and just the, the physiological standpoint of it. And I was lucky enough to, we were cool because obviously we went to the same high school and we were both in college now. And he showed me the ropes as far as fitness and he was doing some personal training and he was doing some of his own workouts. He was always kind of the in shape guy in the class. And so I was, I was under a good mentor, so to speak. Um, he, he actually went on to become a, a, a physician assistant, funny enough, but kind of learning from him. Um, and that, that really sparked my interest. Like, okay, there's something to this. It's not just about how you play. It's about how do you prepare to play? How do you rehab? How do you work out? How do you train? Like there's so many different levels to it. And, that's what I started to fall in love with. So I kind of took that and I started working under some of the physical therapists um, at the university. So just shadowing them, doing like a work study thing. And I fell in love with just the rehab, orthopedic performance kind of kind of field, right? And that's kind of how I got my start. So working there and then obviously studying and getting my degree and um, exercise science with like a a kinesiology focus that's that's what kind of took me to where i am now so just working on the great people having good mentors um realizing that uh there's a lot of ways to skin a cat right it's not just about playing ball it's about preparing it's about you know it's about the different intangibles that go into athletic performance right and that's that's where i started to fall in love with so 
I took it from there and I started to work at, you know, under different doctors at HSS. So I worked there for a bit. I worked at a couple of physical therapy, outpatient clinics and orthopedic. And then um, in last year, December, I was lucky enough to, to be here at Sinai now. So it's, it's been cool because it's been, it's been different. It's been going from the just straight exercise rehab world to the neuro world and working with spinal cord injuries and working with stroke patients. And it's, it's been fun in that sense of just kind of opening up a different can of worms for me. And um, just me, I like to, I like to bring everything together. Like I kind of talk with Anthony about being versatile. So being able to talk to athletes and then being able to talk to therapists, being able to understand athletes and then being able to understand sports doctors. Right. So that's kind of what I've, you know, what I've based myself on and why I think I've been okay with, working with these different populations and yeah that's what's brought me into this world so after that I um got a exercise physiologist um certification so I began doing more metabolic testing more performance testing uh vo2 max testing uh different types of ways to see okay I know about the body now now what about the heart what about you know, the cardiovascular world. So now getting more versed in that and just trying to bring everything together. So that's kind of what, I, you know, I bring to the team here at Sinai. And uh, that's kind of how I found my way into this world. So really falling out of love with playing the game and falling in love with, all right, what goes into the game, right? What goes into an athlete? And it's, it's so much. And like I said, working in pro sports is even more now, like when it comes to the mental aspect, you know, you have to know when to push, you have to know when to pull back. You have to know, man, are we overworking? Cause there's this thing called load management now, right? It's a, it's a hot topic in, in sports in the NBA uh, specifically. And there's been a lot of injuries this year. It was a, a quick turnaround after last NBA season. And a lot of the guys got hurt and the WNBA is trying to, trying to kind of get ahead of that. So bringing sports science into it and uh, looking at uh, a whole bunch of stuff as far as tracking athletes, as far as load, sleep, wellness, uh, mental well-being, right? Um, man, like everything, everything. So just bringing all those spheres together and then trying your best to, to create that uh, proficient athlete, right? And it's never going to be perfect, but it, there's always ways to learn how to how to adapt and how how to progress, right? So that's that's kind of where I am as, as the intro, um, and that's that's where we are now. And obviously, I, I work with Sinai, so still working under some of the best, honestly, best physical therapists I've ever worked with in my career, and still learning a, a ton every day. And uh, I pride myself in kind of being a student, right? always trying to stay up to date on whether it be, you know, the stuff in the weight room, the stuff outside of the weight room. And, and you, you got to stay sharp. Things are always changing. Every week is a new journal. Every week there's a new article. Every week there's a new guru, right? Every week there's a new fad, but um, you have to, you have to stay in tune while kind of not being overwhelmed at the same time. So, you know, obviously last year we had a pandemic and, you know, the the big thing for, because I still, you know, have private athletes and private clients, the big thing is still like, how do I stay fit during a pandemic, right? How do I even progress during a pandemic? And I had to, I had to get creative. I had to get really creative. I had to think outside the box. I had to really break things down to a basic level. And, um, that's what I wanted to talk about today. Like exercise is so polarizing. It's so many, there's so many different ways you can go. Like I said, every week there's a new fad. I'm sure we've all, you know, fell for at least one diet fad. And, you know, we've all been there every week. There's a new exercise fad. So I like to simplify things for my clients and athletes. And I just started really at bare bones. So, I wanted everybody to just hit a step count and we all have apps. We all have these fitness trackers, whether it be Fitbit, Apple watch, um, this, I mean, the whoop strap, the, the rings, the, the aura rings, like 
there's so much things out there now and it's like how are we going to use that to that this crazy technology right these this crazy uh this crazy scientific thing and and make it simple so i just started having my clients just track their sleep and track their steps really simple so every day i do like a wellness check right how did you sleep how many hours did you get you know tell me about it was it, did you was it broken was it straight through was it uh do you feel rested do you mentally did you feel good when you wake when you woke up right little things like that and that's over pandemic when obviously it's a tough time right everybody's dealing with different stressors everybody is um you know maybe family stuff maybe financial stuff maybe relationship so it, it was it was tough everybody had their own thing to carry during that time during that lockdown time so i started really basic get good sleep get good sleep you know there's a whole bunch of science as far as numbers and hrv rate so like the whoop strap will tell you how efficient your sleep was you know the aura ring will tell you how efficient your sleep was depending on how your heart rate very your heart rate variability throughout the night it'll tell you how recovered you are for the most part. So we did use that tool. We use that tool to say, okay, um, based on that and based on you just mentally going through a checklist, are we gonna push it today? Like, do we progress today or do we pull back, right? So really just started there and then step count. Everybody got sedentary. And I think they said the the rule for sedentary was like less than 6,000 steps a day. That was pretty much everybody during pandemic. So I started really basic. Let's get that to 10K. 10K a day, that's what I call it. Like aim for that 10K a day step count. Um, there's not a lot of science behind that, that number actually. Uh, I just like that, that nice round number. And I felt like that was a good way because it didn't have to be straight through just broken up throughout your day get to 10k steps and just feel like okay i you know it's i'm on quarantine but at least i got outside and i did some walking you know whether it be at the park whether it be around the house like whether it be with the kids with the dog right and then i saw when that got better mentality got better right you weren't so crap uh closed inside your house in your room you were able to get out, get some sunshine. I'm a podcast guy. So I told him I'd throw a podcast on, throw some music on, go for a walk and like, just get out the house. And then from there, we'll add on more. But, you know, taking back that subway commute, if you had one, taking back that, taking your kids to dance class, taking back that, you know, going out with your husband to eat, right? Taking back those steps started to I I saw like weight get to weigh on people and when you start getting that sedentary I think that's when it leads to other things that's when it's hard to it's hard to do tough workouts when you're not moving at all right so I was like let's start here right let's start there we're just getting semi-regular activity again and then we can go into to more dynamic workouts right so that's kind of how I started as far as getting my people more act active over the pandemic and over quarantine. Um, and then from there, like, there's, there's, there's always a way. I tell everybody this. Like, I, I do a class. It's called sitness. And it's strictly chair, chair base from the belly button up, right? Obviously, it's for, for paraplegic population. And we, we still break a sweat, right? So there's, there's always a way. There's always a way. Um, body weight is obviously most people's go-to. Body weight stuff, um, different types of circuits and uh, conditioning stuff, uh, planks, push-ups, the, the military stuff. Like, we all know it. We all either love it or hate it. But I started to incorporate that stuff with um, different types of, uh, like, resistance work. So... Say I had an athlete who is a soccer player, right, or a basketball player, just for example, and they had to move laterally, right? They got to shift. They got to move around a lot. It's hard to do that with just, all right, I'm by myself in my room or the park and I'm doing bodyweight stuff. You can, but I was like, all right, how can we make this more 
like uh, more progressive and more like actual game ready, right? So like, see here, always have <laughs> some bands, so just some power bands. I had everybody get something like these. They're on Amazon, like 10 bucks. I would have them anchor them around. So even if nobody else is, you're by yourself, right? Obviously we're supposed to be by ourselves in social distancing. You can anchor that band around and then you can use that to do your plyo drills. You can use that to do some lateral stuff. You can use that to do some explosive stuff, right? So bands was a big, like, for me, I, like, I really got in my band bag over pandemic. And even for myself, because I was obviously working out, like, I had a little courtyard in my apartment, and I just used that. And that, <laughs> and milk jug. <laughs> I would get a gallon milk jug, get a gallon water jug fill it up and that would be my resistance, right? Throw two of those in a backpack and then you have a, a, a weight, right? You can use that for squats, you can use that for lunges, uh, just getting creative, right? So making, oh, suitcases. I would <laughs> fill up two suitcases, do lunges, right? Do carries, like act like you're walking through the airport, right? So there, there was always a way to, to kind of get around that, that pandemic low. Uh, TRX I love too. So these things I don't I don't leave the house without TRX and it's just like a resistance um, a, sus a suspension cable basically you throw it around a door hook you throw it around anything that has enough weight to support your body weight and you can do so much I mean everything it just adds a lot adds a lot to the glad you're enjoying these Emily and I'll link these <laughs> I'll also link these in the chat too I have the links here if you guys want to Think about buying them if you're still doing at home stuff because a lot of people still are and you know god forbid we're we're kind of getting past that lockdown but god forbid we have to go back into a lockdown and we we never as 2020 taught us we never know what life is going to bring us so you got to stay ready so trx bands and like two heavy gallons of water was like my go-to and then everything was sold out like kettlebells were gone um dumbbells good luck like those are either gone or selling for hundreds of dollars uh what else um yeah if you wanted a, even a barbell squat rack it was some ridiculous price so that that was my efficient way especially when i'm working with you know younger athletes and college people who don't want to shell out thousands of dollars for a home gym if you if you got the money for a home gym do your thing but um for most people that those three things in the park and some space we were able to get a pretty pretty good workouts in so those are just some examples that i would use and then like another thing was <laughs> sounds really silly um just like different like yoga flows and crawls like i would have my clients just wake up and go through a yoga flow wake up and go through some crawl, some floor-based stuff, some mobility stuff. So it's like you're, you're setting the tone for that day that, okay, I'm going to be active today. If you wake up and you just kind of, oh, man, it's pandemic. I'm sitting around in my room. I'm, I'm you know, I'm mad. I'm upset. I want to go out. Like, you're going to you're gonna kind of put your body into that state of, all right, we're, we're sedentary today. So wake up. First thing you do, do some stretching do some flows, do some yoga. And I noticed my clients who actually stuck to that, they were more inclined to either jump right into their workout or go into some mo some uh, some mobility stuff and then like keep that going through the day, whether it be walking, whether it be steps, right, et cetera. Um, and then for athletes, like if, if you don't, obviously like, arena, like arenas are closed, gyms are closed, right? So you're, it's hard to keep up with that sport specific stuff. Um, but I think doing some stuff like this, even if it has nothing to do with your sport, I saw a crossover to the people when they returned to play, they were way more ready, so to speak, game ready, uh, than people who were just like, eh, it's locked down. So I'm, I'm a good, I'm gonna wait till my trainer gets back from LA or I'm gonna wait till, you know, stuff opens back up to kind of push myself again. Right. So that's what I that's what I like to do over over lockdown. And um, those are just a few examples. And I'll link those in the uh, in the 
the chat when I can. And then, so this is some facts that I was like telling my people over pandemic. So le- yeah, like I said, less than 6,000 steps a day, sedentary. Uh, the number one predictor of death is low cardiorespiratory fitness or sitting disease, according to Dr. Stephen Blair. So even if we're not talking about sports, even if we're talking about lifestyle, healthy lifestyle, that's where it starts, right? You can't be an athlete if you don't have that healthy lifestyle. And that's what I try to plug into people. Don't think about winning that championship yet. Don't think about scoring that 30 points yet. Think about, okay, how am I going to get something out of this day, right? How am I going to make this day good or progressive no matter what, okay? So that's what I try to, to really plug into people. Um, oh, yeah, and obviously there's so many apps out now, right? Like you have – everybody has a, a smartphone or a smart TV. I mean, you have so many different apps. You know, you have guided workouts for, for the most part. Even the, everybody's seen, like, the crazy mirrors, like, with the trainers on them. Um, YouTube is such a great resource for anything. Like, there's always a way to get something in. And I think just starting with the basics helps people just keep consi- help people keep consistency, even for myself, during uh, that lockdown. I also use furniture a lot, so, like, if I was watching TV and say I was watching a, you know, a show or a movie or something on Netflix, each episode I would get up, 50 squats on the on the sofa, you know, 50 split squats each leg, maybe some planks, some burpees, right? Like that's what really just those little things and people, <laughs> you know, over pandemic either fell way off or they they stayed on they stayed on it. There was no in-between. It was like, oh, I'm okay. Like, you either went way the other end or way the, the good way. So that was a way for my, to keep my clients and myself just in decent shape. Um, also setting new goals, right? Like, we, we get so caught up on these specific kind of, like, goals. As athletes, as people, if you're a CrossFitter, you want to do CrossFit. If you're a runner, you want to do running. If you're a... Uh, you know, if you're a meathead weightlifter, you want to get in the weight room. <laughs> All great stuff, but, like, it's okay to switch it out and go outside your comfort zone. So I I became a, a little bit of a runner, you could say. Like, I'm not a big long-distance running guy, but I started go, hey, I want to do a 10K in this time. No, first I, st- I want to do a 5K in this time. Then it was I want to do a 10K in this time, right? So different goals. I'm sure a lot of people – I know a lot of people got out to running during the pandemic. I was one of them. Not, it wasn't my thing, but it was something to keep me motivated and keep me active. It kept me going because, you know, if I get up and I'm like, oh, God, I got to do these burpees and I got to curl this jug, like if I'm feeling like that, it's not going to work. So if I get up and I'm like, okay, well, I got to hit this today, that, that'll motivate me to get out, you know? So like I said, whatever you don't do, start to do. If you never stretch, do yoga. I tried to get I tried to get all my guys into yoga, meditation, Pilates, like do what you're not comfortable with and try and work on that stuff during the lockdown. I started doing, you know, body weight stuff, handstand stuff, like anything that I felt wasn't my strong, strong point or strong suit, I tried to work on. And that's what really I would say that was the number one thing in keeping me like on point over pandemic for sure. And that's also another way to get outside if you're running and walking or doing yoga outdoors at the park, right? All that good stuff, right? So, right, and lastly, don't think fitness is just physical. Fitness is also mental, right? So the pandemic had its toll on everybody mentally, I'm sure. It has such a great impact on your mood your feeling, your, the relationship with friends, family, loved ones, like the better you feel about that, the better everything else is going to get in my business, right? Everything work. So don't think it's just, all right, I got to look like this for my wedding or I have to look like this for the beach or because this is what this magazine said, right? Think about it. Feel, you feel good. You're healthy. 
everything else gets better, right? So that that's what I really like to hold my hat on, especially as I get older. It's less about the look and less about, you know, I try not to sell people on that idea of the perfect beach body or whatever. Like, think about how good you're going to feel after you get that 45 minutes in. And then that's going to translate to everything else in life, right? So th- that's how I try to kind of picture fitness for my people over over pandemic. Um, let's see what else we got. Yeah, like like I said earlier, exercise is such a we see it everywhere. Social media, TV, movies, like everybody is like you have to do this or this is how it's done. This fat, this you know, this diet, right? There's there's more than one ways to skin a cat. There's so many ways. So a lot of people did, like over pandemic, I tried to get a couple of people into different types of fasting. Not saying you have to fast, but if you wake up and you're bored, right? Sometimes you just kind of lay around snacking. If you wake up and you're like, eh, I'm gonna wait until I'm going to wait until noon. I woke up at 10, and then I'm going to eat from noon to 7, noon to 8. Giving yourself that eating window, that was a way of, like, breaking down a lot of that that snacking. And I think that's what hurt a lot of people over pandemic, just being around food more. If you're in your living room around your kitchen, you're going to go to your kitchen more. If you're in your living room and you're not doing much, we all we all get bored and snack, so different types of dieting, not saying you have to do one or the other, um, but just different ways to keep more disciplined with food because that, that's the name of the game, right? You can do as many burpees. You can do as many jumping jacks. If your diet's not healthy, it's, it's all for, not all for none, but you're doing yourself obviously a huge disservice. Um, I pulled up some like facts about like even obesity and, it said, obviously, over 70 million people in the U.S. obese. Um, fifth leading cause of death, overweight and obesity. 40 million children under the age of five overweight in 2012. So it's, it's something that's still affecting the country, and that's that's really what I want to change. It's a big, uh, I forgot to mention this, but when I was 17, my dad, who was not, had, he was not being healthy, he was drinking a lot. He was eating a lot of stuff he shouldn't have. He, you know, got, he had diabetes already. So he already was in a, not a great place, but he had to get a stint put in his heart. And that was kind of his wake up call. I'll never forget that day, like walking into that hospital in Long Island. And I was like, whoa, like, you know, it doesn't hit you until it actually is real. And then even seeing, even for him seeing it, it was like, whoa, like I got, I got to change my, I I get my stuff together, and he got better. Thank God. He's he's not you know Mr. Olympia, <laughs> but no 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 uh no stuff going on since then. Even for me, like that was a, a wake up call. Like oh wow, like there's more to this than just having six pack abs. Like there is this is about longevity. This is about you know my sister was young at the time, five or so. You know, and it's like this is about longevity, being around for the people who love you, and um, just being happy and healthy, right? If we don't have that, there's nothing much that else that really, really matters, right? Once you get that taken away, you really start seeing you can't take it for granted, right? So, yeah, that that's my story, and I was I was hoping to leave <laughs> leave a little time for uh, some questions, and if anybody wants to pick my brain. Or we can just keep talking. What are you thinking, Anthony? Okay, I will definitely throw it to um, uh, Ms. Anderson and yeah. Ms. Jackson. If you would like to ask a question, you can come off mute. Or um, if you're comfortable, you come off camera and ask a question. If not, I've written down a few and I can um, uh, go back and forth with uh, yeah. Dr. Jones. So we'll give you a second to see yeah. if anybody wants to chime in. Okay. So um, one thing that stood out when you talked about um, intermittent fasting, it's intermittent mm-hmm. fasting. <laughs> I, I always, uh, always mess up with I that know. word. Tricky um, word, yeah. Is, would you say that is more um, beneficial than 
the other diets that are out there, like when you got to eat every three hours, I found that mm -hmm. intermittent fasting, it controls how much you eat because your stomach tends to shrink when it's not mm -hmm. consuming so much. And I've okay. lost more weight with that than I did with the um, eating every three hours. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm glad you're, glad you're familiar with it. It's something that's worked for me and clients in the past. I'm not, and I'm not saying it's right for everybody. So I think, you know what I think? I think it depends really a lot on lifestyle. Okay. Um, yeah, I, tr I try to, yeah, I, tr I definitely yeah. try. I definitely just try to um, uh, eat after five. Like I'll get yeah. up, I'll oh, water, wow. I'll snack on things, but I will eat a real meal around five. Yeah. And then when, when do you, when is your cutoff? When do you, uh, my which, cutoff, do you mean, I really don't have a cutoff. Like most of the times when I eat once, I'm good. But if I'm up late, yeah. I might have to eat something else. Only because right. the, uh, the duration has has went on, so I get right. on again. But other than that, I've been doing a good job with it. <laughs> so that's what I was saying. Big, big on lifestyle. All right. So say, all right, just say you're a construction worker, right? And you wake up at six, and you guys, you still hear me? Yeah, I can still hear you. I'm sorry. Gotcha. You wake up at six, and then you work from six to three. Obviously. That's not going to be great, right? That's not going to be the type of diet that you want if you're not eating until five, right? Or you might not have energy. You might have a super physical job early in the morning, and you need that energy early on, right? So then you might have to switch up as far as that fasting window. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is, like, a lot of people just, they feel better on food, and that's fine. There's no rule that says you shouldn't eat or you have to eat right but some people are big morning eaters and they wake up and if they don't have food they feel groggy work performance suffers mood is not great so th th those things you don't want to sacrifice but i will say i think it's great for cutting that late night off and for me that's the hard part once it gets past a certain time you start like i always say like discipline is like a muscle throughout the day it wears down so by 12 noon, you're good. But if by 8 o'clock, you're like, all right, I'm giving up. And you go binge out, then it's all for nothing. So mm -hmm. my clients who are like heavy late night bingers, I don't recommend it for. But the mm -hmm. clients who are kind of like more daytime eaters, or that, you know, they they eat a lot at lunchtime, or, you know, they eat a lot with their kids, who they have young kids, they eat a lot early in the day. I think it's good for them. If that forces you that in eight hits, you feel like starving and you want to just give in and eat everything in your cabinet, then I say it's not the best. But for the, I think for the majority of New Yorkers, it is it is a good diet model. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So another thing, up, another thing that came up, you said um, obesity. Um, yeah. It's like a, a something that's killing us, uh, just being overweight or living unhealthy. Is obesity considered a people problem or a society issue? Man, great, great question. Great question. I think both. I really think both. I, I think, and this, we were just talking about this other day because, you know, I said I have a little sister. She's all about that iPad, man. She, She's all about that, you know, Snap, not Snapchat, it was it, TikTok. And, yeah. like, we used to go outside and play tag. Like, that's how we had fun. We were running around the streets. We were running around in the park. You know, she has a bike. She doesn't really use it. That, that's how we got around. Like, we didn't have a choice. So I think, you know, technology in a way is, I have many blessings, obviously, but in a sense, it's kind of forced kids to be less active. Oh. I think that is a society thing. Um, and I think even the numbers reflect that as far as like looking at kids nowadays compared to before. So, you know, I think both society and obviously people, right? Like we were in such a microwave society now we want it fast right now so to sit down and prep and prepare healthy stuff takes a takes a little bit of time and effort right mm -hmm. sometimes we just want it now like mm -hmm. we, you we can literally get food delivered you don't have to see the delivery person <laughs> that you know they can leave it at the doorstep in five minutes you know what i mean it's so easy so like in that sense i, I think it's a little bit of both i think it's a little bit of both you know, and we all love some Uber Eats when we don't feel like 
I feel like moving that that delivery hits, but I think it just makes it too easy to get some, even if it's something that's quote unquote healthy, but you might get a dessert with it mm-hmm. or you might get a drink with it. And that's an extra five, 600,000 calories on top of what's supposed to be healthy. Mm-hmm. So I, I think both, man. Yeah. Oh. So you mentioned earlier about um when you, when you feel better, you live better. Can you speak more yeah. to how important that is? Because most of the times when we just, feel better in the way that we look in the outfit we kind of exude that so how important is it to actually live better to feel better or vice versa i i, I think so important uh i think obviously we know we know how big mental health is now and it's, it's really being like for the right right reasons taken serious in a lot of arenas now and like i have clients who come to me like I'm miserable. I'm depressed. This is the only thing that I think is going to make me feel better. You know, I've done, you know, I've done therapy. I've done all this other stuff. I've done the the cognitive stuff. But like, if I don't feel right in my body or with my fitness, like I feel like I'm missing something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think there's a lot to be said about that. Like you, you want to feel like, okay, I'm, I'm good. And it's not about, like, even, yeah, like, there is a, a good part of that, too, like, looking good in that suit or that sh- that shirt or whatever. But, like, at the same time, it is about also setting goals and accomplishing them, getting that confidence from that, right? Like, I want to do this, and I did it. It's, it's hard to kind of replace that, right? So if you actually can do that, even when it comes to health and fitness, I think you, everything else just starts clicking, right? And then, even in my own experience, right, like, when you hit that goal, it's like, wow, that kind of means more than like even getting that whatever, looking good in that shirt or six pack, or whatever. So I, I think they go hand in hand, honestly. Yeah. So setting mm-hmm. goals is like an important feat to leading to something yeah. greater? Yeah, definitely. Oh. Definitely. I think it just comes, that, that's, that's like just to me, just human nature. Mm-hmm. Saying you, you want to do something and accomplishing it. It's, I think it's hard to beat that. Um, so, like, I like to set small goals. I think you, it's like climbing a mountain, right? If I just throw everything at you at first, you're going to be overwhelmed. And if you don't get there, you'll be defeated. But if we set little small progressions over time, over time, over time, get to that point and you get to that top, it's like, wow. Like, it's that feeling of just enlightenment. It's, uh, it's a good feeling. It's, it's hard to describe. <laughs> so you spoke yeah. about um, mental health. Um, how important is it to to manage your mental health? Because you work with million dollar athletes, so if they're still not healthy or feeling mentally uh, 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 willing to go forward every single day. How do the regular uh, people handle mental health? How would you suggest it? So important. It's, it's so important. That's why. You know, like that's that's what I was talking about earlier. Like the funny thing, like when you think about working with the pros, it's like oh, it's all about the weight room, it's all about performance. But when you get there, it's like no, it's managing these people, right? If you don't have empathy, if you can't connect with them, if you can't understand where they're coming from, it's hard to manage them. You know, on the court. Mm-hmm. So I I think it starts there. Um, we like I said, we do a mental health check every single day. And you notice the difference too. Like when somebody scores low, things suffer. When somebody scores high, things are pretty good. So it's like, I think they go hand in hand. I think, especially when it comes to egos and like you said, a lot of money on the table, right? Your livelihood is on the table. So it's it's a lot to hold on to. Like it's not all glamorous and it's not all easy um, like everybody thinks. So I, I think that's huge. That's huge now. And you know, we have like on-site sports psychologists and they they play a big role. They play a big role. And then when it comes to the regular folks, it's the same thing. If you come to me and like you're struggling, you know, with mental health stuff and then we're doing stuff to make it worse, you go take that. You're going to go take that home. You're going to go take that to work. Right. So I always take that into consideration. And as a a coach or sports a strength trainer, you you wear many hats. You wear many hats. It ain't, and it's not just about counting reps. It's about like feeling where people are coming from and being able to relate and treating them like like human beings. So, 
I think that's huge. Very important. Yeah. So you talked about wearing many hats. You talked about also work. You talked about family. You talked about taking things home. So that brings up load management. We talked about the athletes mm-hmm. and load management. So let's take it from the athletes and talk about just regular individuals. What would be a good resource or exercise or something that would help with load managing your day-to-day yeah. tasks to make sure that you're one, mentally free from stress and also mm-hmm. trying to live that, that feel good life that, that we talked about? Yeah, great, great question. I think a lot of practice uh, dealing with people and know, knowing when it's time. All right, we we got to pull back a bit. Um, so I think they're just uh, years like experience, knowing how to read people, um, and also proper programming. Right? You see a lot of, you know, I love the boot camp stuff, but you see a lot of military trainers and military strength coaches where it's like just beating them up kind of that old fashioned way of going about things, beat them up, beat them up, beat them up, bring them back, beat them up, beat them up. But sometimes that can take a toll on people. And, you know, recovery is just as important to me as performance. If you're not recovering, you don't, you don't come back stronger. If you don't come back stronger, then we're, we're doing something wrong. So that they go hand in hand. You, you have to be able to monitor, whether it be, you know, weight room programming, whether it be sleep, uh, sleep tracking like I talked about the Uber ring and then the um the whoop I think the whoop is a great tool like we have all this technology now so I, I do use those if my clients are down to wear them I'll have them wear them but you don't have to but I think just being smart knowing athletes knowing proper progressions not not throwing the kitchen sink at them at first I rather I rather shoot under and then shoot too much mm-hmm. because you know I don't I don't know if you you saw basketball like you know, the the Lakers might have shot too much. Like they, they played a lot of their, their big guys down the stretch and mm-hmm. by the time they got to the playoffs they were kinda they were kinda gassed and obviously they, they lost in the first round. So I would say better to undershoot. It's kind of a hard process to, to grasp when you when you're first getting into it because you're like, Why I wanna do more, like more better. Uh, more more is not always better. So mm-hmm. I think just experience and just knowing knowing how to work with athletes. One thing that stood out, um, you talked about sleep. How important is sleep? Because sometimes we see the most successful people talking about how they don't get a lot of sleep. They sleep four hours a day and they keep working. But yeah. they live the lifestyle that we want to have. So how important is sleep for the average person? I think number one, I, 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 th- I put it right up there with, with diet, honestly, right up there. When it comes to recovery, they're, they're neck and neck for me, like, because you know what's funny? The older I get, <laughs> the more I feel like I need a good amount of sleep. Like before, I, when I was in college, I was like, why do I need sleep? Like I'll wake up, go to class, you know, have a Red Bull, I'm good. Now it's, I start to feel that mentally work isn't as sharp. Like, um, like even if you're relying on caffeine, it's not the same energy. You feel that it's kind of a fake energy in a way. And then eventually you crash and it's just that constant cycle right Mm -hmm. so i think it's number one i think it's number one there's a book that you guys should check out it's called power sleep matthew walker and i I read it a few months ago and it's it's so like eye-opening basically said anything less than seven hours you're really doing yourself with the service like Mm -hmm. when it just comes to overall like physiological functions in the body let alone like being a, a performance athlete I think it's number one. If if we have players who come in and they they mark red on their sleep, meaning they got less than a certain amount, we usually pull back with them. Like we we don't even have them do anything heavy that day. Mm-hmm. So super important. Yeah. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. So earlier you spoke about um the uh, resistance bands and stuff like that. How 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 yeah. important is it to focus on your natural weight with resistance bands versus going into the gym and lifting all the heavy weights in there? What's the difference? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think resistance is resistance. I think tension is tension. I just think it's, 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 def, it's definitely different. Like, I'll have a lot of guys who lift big weights, but then when they get under that band, it's different because it's constant tension. It's not like you're curling up a dumbbell and when you get here, it's nothing. It's still, it's still a lot of tension up here with that resistance band. So I, I like to incorporate both. Like, we'll even incorporate free weights and bands at the same time. Bands with squats on, 
around the bars, um, chest press with bands around the bars. Like, I think it's it's important to do both, especially for athlete, right? You want to be able to go against tension. You're constantly moving. You're constantly getting getting knocked around. If you can't handle that constant, like, kind of fast and kind of we call it snap tension, I don't think you're going to be as great as an athlete as you can be. So if you're constantly just doing all free weights, it's, 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 I think there's a, a limit there as far as h- how much you can, you can progress with athletically. Yeah. Um, but I just like them. They're a great tool and they, they're just a change up. Like if everybody gets used to a stimulus, so sometimes you just got to switch it up yeah. and you can bring them anywhere. They're easy. You know, that's the most important. You can do them anywhere. Easy and cost effective. <laughs> Especially yeah, the water yeah, jug yeah. that you mentioned yeah, earlier. <laughs> yeah, like seriously, gallon water jug, fill it up, and like you got two free weights right there. Mm. So that's how I try to get everybody's mind. Just getting creative. Just get mm. creative. Yeah. So my, my last question I have right, written down is you mentioned the trainer mirrors. Is that yeah. considered a fad or do you feel like that's something that would really get a uh, the world healthier if they actually buy a, a mirror? Man, that's a great question. <laughs> I actually, uh, it's funny, I auditioned for them when they just dropped the, uh, like last year or whatever, a couple of years ago. Because I remember one of my clients was like telling me about it when it first came out. It's, first of all, it's so expensive. Um, man, I think, I, I would say this. If you have the space and if you have the money to shell out three thousand dollars for a mirror, and you think that's going to help you get more progress or keep yourself accountable, I'm all for it because I'm all about like keeping consistency. Mm-hmm. Do I think there are better ways? Yes, um, and, and I don't know how the training is up there. Like I know they have a bunch of trainers. I'm sure the trainers are great. Uh, I just think too many because I have people who got it and don't use it. I think too many people put too much pressure on different like mirror and like Peloton and like all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, that's great. But if you're not going to keep yourself consistent, then it's all kind of for nothing. So I'm all about whatever's going to keep you going. If you can see yourself doing that for a good amount of time and actually progressing with it and having fun and keeping it and coming back every single day. Cool. But if you want to get it just because you thought it was cool or to use it once in a while or, just have it in the living room. It's like, mm, it's, it's an expensive kind of pointless thing for me, but I'm, I'm all for getting people going, whatever gets you going. That could be CrossFit. That can be, you know, boot camp class, whatever, whatever gets you going. But uh, we'll see. I need, I need to play around with the mirror a little bit more. I've never actually taken a class up there. Mm-hmm. So let me, let me play around with it and I'll, I'll have some more feedback. <laughs> yeah. I only brought it up. It looks cool. I had a conversation with somebody the other day, and it was like, you know, you sh- we should invest in this. And I was like, wow, when I got YouTube. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. YouTube is the best resource out there. YouTube. Mm-hmm. YouTube is the best resource out there. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, whatever works. It, it does look really cool. I give it that. It looks cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So but if, if you're you not going to do it on YouTube, you're probably not going to use the mirror. So it's like, definitely. you got to pick your poison. <laughs> So if you had, um, oh, you know what? You mentioned earlier uh, a podcast. Is the podcast towards? Oh, I, I, um, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Oh, I thought you said you had yeah. a podcast. Okay, I'll no, no. <laughs> I wish I'm working on it, working on it. Uh, yeah, you, I, we sh- I, I we should talk it. offline. I, I have a podcast out there too. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Well, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. So if you had one final message that you want to give any of your viewers, anybody who's watching this uh, video right now, what, what yeah. will be your closing remarks? Just, Always, always adapt, be adaptful. Um, you know, something like 1% of kids who play basketball make it to the NBA, mm-hmm. right? So, like, you know, pro sports isn't in, it's not in a realm for everybody. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Being, you know, Mr. Olympia is, isn't in a realm for everybody. Nothing wrong with that. Be adaptful. Use your tools. Use your, your talents. Um always find a way never box yourself in and always always just uh yeah work hard and keep going just keep going never stop there's always a way always a way whether you're in the rehab whether you're medical whether you're performance 
always away, stay sharp, always stay sharp, stay on top of things, and, you know, and just, just be adaptable, be versatile. Don't box yourself in because things are constantly changing. And a lot of people who you box themselves in 10 years ago are, are now like kind of out the loop. So, yeah. No. Well, thank you. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your talk. Um, this will go up on the Swag website and be on the Mount Sinai uh, YouTube page uh, as early as Monday, hopefully. And um, awesome. next week, we will have one last session of this human performance series. So we hope whoever's watching, please see the emails, please join. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you, Ms. Jones, Dr. Jones, for coming through and blessing us with all your wisdom. We fully appreciate it. And welcome to the SWAT Network. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Emily, Marcia, Anthony. Appreciate you guys. It was, it was a pleasure. Hopefully, somebody gets some, some good use out of this. <laughs> they definitely will. <laughs> All right. All Thank right. you. A lot of great advice. Really appreciate Thank it. You. Yes. Thank excellent. You, Marcia. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank you. Thank you, guys. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. OK, everybody, enjoy your rest of your Saturday and look forward to seeing everyone soon. Right. All right. Again, me. Talk to you later. Talk to you later. All right. Bye.